nurse today. How are you? I'm good in yourself. Good. I'm coming in, I'm gonna do a head to toe assessment on you and also do your vital signs. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so what, before we begin, I'm gonna go ahead and just close the curtain. Um, I wanna go ahead first by, let me just, my hands got stuck with the cord. I just wanna go ahead and check your ID band first. If you can just tell me your name and your date of birth. Alexander Hamilton, date of birth, nine, uh, August 28, 1987. Okay, and what would you prefer to call me by? Mrs. Hamilton. Mrs. Hamilton. Okay, Mrs. Hamilton, I'm going to go ahead and um, first just um, sanitize my hands one more time again, and I'm going to put on gloves, and I'm going to clean my instruments, and then we're going to start by taking your vital signs, okay? Taking your temperature. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and open wide. I'm gonna put this places under your tongue. All right, please. 98.6, which is normal. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do assess your pulse. Okay, I did it for 30 seconds. Your respirations for 30 seconds. So your pulse is normal. It's, it was 78 as well as your respirations. Now I'm going to go ahead and take your blood pressure. So your blood pressure is 120 over 80, which is normal. I'm going to place it over here. All right, so first I'm going to go ahead and before we begin doing your head to toe assessment, um, basically I'm just going to do a general assessment, but do you need to use the restroom at all before we begin? No, not right now. Okay, all right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do and start by first is I just want to um, just ask you a couple of questions. So can you tell me um, what brought you to the hospital? My stomach is rock hard. Your stomach is rock hard. Okay. And um, tell me a little bit about that. Are, is, are you experiencing any pain there? Um, yeah, I guess so. I've been feeling a little constipated. Okay. And how long have you been constipated for? Four days. Four days. Okay. And can you tell me, describe the 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 pain that you're having in your abdomen. So is it dull, achy, crampy? How are you, what, how are you feeling? It's like a aching, cramping type of pain on my lower stomach. On your lower stomach, okay. And um, is there anything that makes it better or makes it worse? Um, throughout the day as I eat, it makes it worse. And when I wake up, it's like okay-ish. Okay, and so let me have you rate the pain from zero out of 10, zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain, how would you rate it? nine a nine okay have you taken anything to help alleviate that pain at all i tried pepto-bismol but that's it doesn't really work it doesn't work any pain medication at all no okay and how and you said it's been lasting for three days have you had it any previous time is this the first time you're experiencing this no it's kind of common for me it's common for you okay how often do you experience this maybe like three times a month okay um, and is this the first time you're seeing a doctor for this? Yes. Okay. Okay. So hopefully we can address that. Once I get to your abdomen, I'll um, do a further assessment as well. Okay. Um, so can you, um, do you tell me uh, what year it is? 2017. 
2023. 2023, okay. And uh, what season is it? It's about to be fall, or okay. it was fall. Okay. And do you know where you are at? At a hospital. Okay, what hospital are you at? Trinity. Okay, Trinity Hospital. So the patient, um, just based on the conversation, the patient's orientated time first, time four, person, um, place, time, and event. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin the head to toe assessment. So first I'm gonna go ahead and elevate the bed just so that I'm not bending down. And I'm gonna start from, um, from your head and then I'm gonna work my way down, okay? So first I'm gonna do, um, Again, you're going to be inspecting, okay, so inspecting the overall um, patient's um, hair, uh, facial, anything, any, um, looking for any facial abnormalities or anything like that, and looking for symmetry of the face. But I'm going to start with your eyes. So first, if you just look straight ahead, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash this light in your eye. And basically what I'm looking for is that the little dot, the little black dot in your eye, it usually what happens when you place light in there, it will constrict, which makes it a little smaller. So I'm gonna be looking at both of your eyes and it's, normally it tells me that everything is um, functioning properly in your eyes, okay? So go ahead and look straight ahead. Okay, that looks good. And that looks good on that side as well. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is assess for accommodation. What that is, is basically I'm gonna have hold my pen upright and it's gonna come closer and then it's gonna come back. So just follow, you just have to look straight ahead and just follow my pen with your eyes. Okay, so um, so that looks good. So that means that Perla is intact. So pupils, eyes um, are equal, round, and react to light and accommodation. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and just look at, if you can just open your mouth for me. Ah, uh, okay, good. So everything looks good in your mouth. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go, you're gonna feel my, I'm gonna expose your arms. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you're gonna feel the back of my hand, um, touch your arms. So basically I'm just assessing for the skin temperature and I'm also looking at your skin color, which looks normal to race. And then I'm also gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch the back of your hand and I'm gently gonna pinch, it's not gonna hurt. And I'm just assessing for hydration and the elasticity of your skin. All right, that looks good. All right, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assess for capillary refill. So what that is, is I'm basically going to pinch the, the nail bed of your thumb, and I'm looking to make sure that the, the color returns back within three seconds, and that's just assessing for circulation. All right, that looks good. The other thing I would like for you to do is you're going, I'm gonna assess for your strength. So if you can just squeeze my hands. All right, good. So. Both hands um, have equal of, uh, strength. And then I'm gonna have you um, lift up your arms as high as you can. All right, so go ahead and do that. Okay, that looks good. All right, good. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, assess your pulse sites. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna, um, and I'm gonna do that from, I'm gonna do the first top portion and then I'll do um, the lower extremities. So. First, I'm just gonna feel for your temporal um, pulse, and then I'm gonna assess your carotid here, all right? And then I know that your other landmark is your heart sound, which is your apical, which um, we'll find it right here on the mid, um, fifth intercostal place, midclavicular. And then I'm gonna palpate your brachial, and then your radial, okay? And then when I go to the lower extremities, I'll do, identify the other pulse sites. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, listen to your heart sounds. So, and I'm gonna say them out loud, your different heart sounds. There are five cardiac heart sounds. So first is your aortic, which is in the second intercostal space on the right side of the patient. Just across from the second intercostal space on the left side is your pulmonic. And then here on the left mid sternum, on the third intercostal space is your herbs point. Fourth intercostal space, just below that, is your cricuspis. And then your apical pulse is where you find in the fifth intercostal space on the left side mid clavicular. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and listen to your apical pulse for a full minute, which is your heart sounds that I'm listening for. 
okay? And I also got 78 for your apical pulse. So I listened for a full minute. You will listen, okay? Just make sure you listen for a full minute. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to listen to your respiration sounds. So if you just take a nice deep breath sounds when you feel my stethoscope touch your skin. All right, so I'm gonna listen to six points in the front. Okay, and then I would have you sit up, but for purpose of this, we can't have the simulation, we can't have this um, simulation guide sit up. So I will listen to eight points in the back. So the way I will listen to the eight points is that I will start um, on the top and then work my way down. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and I will listen, that would how I listen in the backside of the patient's um, resp respirations. Now, um, I just have a couple of questions to ask you. Um, I'm gonna ask you some cardiac and some respiratory questions. Now, um, Andy, do you have any uh, family history of heart disease? No. Any, um, any heart problems for yourself? No. No, any high blood pressure? I don't think so. No, chest pain, experience any chest pain at all? No. No, any palpitations? No. Okay, good. How about respiratory, any respiratory issues? I have asthma. You have asthma, okay. So, um, how long have you had asthma? Since I was little. Since you were little. And what do you do, um, what triggers you to have an asthma attack? When I run. When you run. How often do you run? Not that often anymore. Not that often? Okay. Um, and what do you use when you do have an asthma attack? Do you use any type of medication? No. No? Do you have ever have an inhaler? Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's the type of med that is the okay. medication. So an inhaler, um, do you use an inhaler often? No. No? And you always carry it with you? I try to when I remember. Okay, good. So for the most part, you're not having any issues with your asthma at all at this current time? No. Okay. Um, so again, you know, if you have, you just always want to make sure that you have that, um, your, uh, is it albuterol that you're using? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, just want to make sure you always have that on hand with you, especially if you ever have to run or anything like that. Um, and then any type of um, shortness of breath you ever experienced? No. No? How about, um, have you had a history of smoking at all? No. No? Now, do you um, have any cough? Yes. Okay, what type of cough do you have? Do you have a dry cough or? A dry cough. Or do you produce any sputum at all? No. No. Now, the dry cough, is it something that happens often or? I think it's seasonal around winter time. Winter time? Is it just due to the dryness? I believe so. Okay. Do you use any humidifier in your home? No. To help with that? So that's something I maybe recommend because um, sometimes we get a lot of dryness and, and um, especially during the winter months. So sometimes using a humidifier in your house can help um, you know, alleviate some of that uh, dry cough that you may be experiencing. So try that and see if it works out for you. And if it's something that you're still concerned with, then, then please let us know. Okay. All right. So we um, finished the cardiovascular and um, respiratory system. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to your abdomen. So I'm going to just lift up your gown here. And then we'll ask a little more questions also about your, um, your, um, what you've been experiencing in the past couple of days. So I'm just ins inspecting um, the abdomen, just making sure to looking for um, how, how is the, the appearance of the abdomen. Um, and I do notice that you do have some bloatiness and, and it's protruding a little bit. Um, is that something recently that you've been experiencing, you said, right? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and listen to your stomach. And I'm just listening for your sounds in your stomach. Uh, what I'm listening for is like some wave-like gurgly sounds. And I will start in the right lower quadrant here, just on the lower part of your abdomen. And I'm going to work my way up. Okay, here's some gurgly sounds, which is good. That's expected. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and palpate. So I'm going to do a light palpation and then I'm going to do a deeper palpation. So you just let me know if you experience any pain when I do that, okay? So I'm just starting with the light palpation here. Any pain at all? Yes. Yes? On my lower stomach. Okay. Does it feel like, how would you say the pain? Like, it's like a, it just kind of hurts. Okay, it hurts. Okay. It. I'll be gentle. I'm going to do a little deeper. Does it hurt when I do that? A little bit. Same spot. Same spot? Okay. Now, let's talk about your diet. Now, how would um, you rate your diet? Is it fair, poor, or good? I think it's fair. Fair, okay. Now, how many times a day do you eat? How many meals? Like two. 
two meals and what are those meals consist i try to go to mcdonald's as often as i can just because it's convenient okay is that regularly what you eat on a weekly basis yeah okay and is, is it breakfast lunch or lunch and dinner or what, what meals do you eat at like McDonald's? lunch and dinner lunch and dinner so what does your lunch consist of and dinner consist of from mcdonald's i get like the egg sandwiches with coffee and then i'll get like a quarter pounder for dinner okay is there any vegetables that you eat at all no i ask for it plain plain okay so um so one thing I would recommend, so something that can also trigger um, constipation is definitely not eating um, fiber. So you definitely wanna increase your fiber. So we can talk about different ways that like looking at, if that's something that you eat regularly at McDonald's, um, maybe we might recommend having a salad or you know having some um, vegetables um, as snacks so throughout the day so that you can get that fiber intake. Um, how about fluids? Are you drinking any fluids? Yeah. I drink Gatorade. Gatorade? About how many Gatorades um, do you drink? Like the two big Gatorades. Two big Gatorades. Do you drink any water? Is it Gatorade water? <laughs> it's liquid. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we definitely need to drink fluids, um, water. We want to um, drink about anywhere from six to eight glasses. I know that's a lot. So how about we, we can make a compromise, maybe drinking two glasses to start with and then kind of increasing that. We have a pitcher of water here next to your bedside, so maybe throughout the day we'll try to just take um, a couple of sips throughout the day so that you can get that fluid intake, because um, that's really important, because that also will increase um, your risk of, of continuing to have um, constipation. How about any nausea, vomiting that you're experiencing at all? I get nauseous in the morning. Nauseous in the morning? So tell me a little bit about the nausea in the morning. What do you think, um, is there anything that's causing that? I like to eat right before I go to sleep. Right before you go to sleep. Do you lay right down right away after you eat? Yes. Okay, because sometimes that, you know, we recommend that not to lay down because then that can also increase, um, can also could cause upset stomach, but also can, um, can maybe experience some of that nausea too. So kind of staying upright at least 30 minutes after you have a meal. Now in the morning, um, if you're hungry, sometimes it's good to have some like crackers at the bedside. Um, or sometimes even um, taking some ginger, um, little candy, sometimes that can help um, suppress that um, nausea. But if it's something that, is it something that it's like debilitating for you or does it just kind of go away? It kind of goes away. Okay. Yeah, just let us know if that's something that continues so that we can, you know, address that if it's continuing on. Is it, does it happen very often or? Yeah, I get snackish at night. Just snackish at night, okay. All right. Um, any um, upset stomach, um, heartburns you ever experiencing at all? No. Okay, so let's talk about your bowel movements. Now, um, you said, when was the last time you had the bowel movement again? Four days ago. It was four days ago, okay. So what's your normal pattern? How often do you usually go before you have the constipation? Not that often. Maybe like, I would go to the bathroom and have a bowel movement like two times a month. Two times a month? Or is that is it, <laughs> two times a month, or is it every two days? Every two days. Oh, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, now, every so no, your normal pattern is every two days. Do you take anything to go to the restroom? Do you take like sometimes over the counter laxatives or um, uh, stool softeners or any Metamucil? No. No. Okay. Um, so describe your last your last poop. Like, uh, how was it? Was so it was it like deer pellets? Deer pellets, okay. Is that usually your normal to have deer pellets or? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that could be associated, you know, with not drinking enough fluids and fiber in your diet. So that's something we definitely wanna work on and we'll kind of uh, think about a diet plan that we'll work with um, before you leave so that we can um, help hopefully address these issues and as well um, consult with the doctor and see what their recommendations are as well. Now, how about um, urination? Now, do you have any trouble urinating? No. No. How um, do you have any urgency or frequency? Um, I try to go as little as I can. I like to hold it in. Is there a reason why you hold it in? No, just convenience. Just convenience? Okay. Well, holding it in, you know, I, we definitely don't recommend that because that can put your risk for get, developing a, ur a urinary tract infection. And especially if you're not drinking enough fluids, that could even increase your risk. So I would suggest that, you know, as often that you need to go, I know that it might be. Uh, annoying kind of having to get it up and go to the restroom, but um, it is, you know, it's definitely going to prevent you from um, developing a urinary tract infection. 
Um, any, um, how would you describe your urine? Is it clear, yellow, dark yellow, orangish? Like apple juice. Apple juice, okay. Um, and then any, any blood in the urine? No. Any pain when you urinate? No. Any difficulty urinating? No. Okay. How about any discharge? Any discharge? No. General discharge, anything like that? Okay, that's good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue to, um, unless you have any other concerns with your abdomen that you didn't let me know? No, I think that's it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and now go to your legs. Um, I'm also, just one thing I'm going to assess is one of your pulses right here in, um, just in terms of um, looking at identifying the pulse site, the femoral pulse site, we would identify it here, okay? And then I'm going to go to the lower extremity here. And we would, um, I'm going to just finish up the pulse sites so that you know the, um, the other pulse site would be your popliteal, just right behind the knee. The other pulse site would be your tibia, posterior tibia over here, and then your dorsal pedialis, which would be on the foot. So those are all the, identify all the nine pulse sites. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, Mrs. Hamilton, is I'm going to, you're gonna feel my back of my hand again on your legs. I'm just again assessing for the skin temperature, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and assess for swelling, which we call edema. And I'm just gonna press my two fingers along your shin bone here and along your across your leg as well as on the top of your foot. And I'm also gonna do it on the other leg as well, okay? So again, th that looks good, no swelling noted. So then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to press onto your um, toe nail, both of them. Okay, and I'm assessing for circulation as well, which looks good. And again, I already, I'm just gonna, I, I already um, identified the pulse site, but I'm just gonna go ahead and palpate your, um, your pulse on your toe, which is called pedal pulse. All right, and then I'm gonna look in between your toes, just to make sure I don't see any skin breakdown, which everything looks normal and healthy here. Then I'm gonna also look underneath your heel, just to make sure that there's no skin breakdown. All right, so if you could just do me a favor and, and go ahead and move your ankles back and forth and then um, rotate your ankles and then go ahead and wiggle your toes. Okay, good. So you wanna just kind of do those exercises while you're laying in bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and have you lift up your leg as high as you can. Okay, good. All right, and then last thing I'll have you do, if you could press forward on my hands here, just like if you're pressing on a gas pedal. All right, and then Push upwards towards against my hands that you feel here. Okay, good. So everything looks good on your lower legs. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cover you. Do you have any questions or concerns that no. I did not address? Okay, so just to recap what we discussed and the concerns of what brought you to the hospital is that you've been experiencing for the four, four days that you've been experiencing some constipation and some cramping and some discomfort and you said you had nine out of 10 pain, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to the doctor and just address your concerns. I'm gonna see what orders he um, order, and then I'll come back in um, and we'll talk about some different uh, types of diet plans for you that, um, that we can recommend to help address this constipation. Okay, um, so before I leave the room, um, any other questions you may have for me? Can I have some apple juice? Sure, I can definitely have get you some apple juice. Um, I'm gonna lower your bed. Um, are you in a comfortable position? Yes, thank you. Okay, do you need me to elevate your bed at all, the head of the bed? No, it's okay. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and also um, just make sure that I place this uh, bedside table next to you, and again, your water's here, so just do me a favor and try to drink as many, just take a couple sips throughout the day so that we can make sure that we um, get some fluids in you as well. And then, um, I will come back and do some hourly roundings, but just before I leave, I just also want to make sure that you know that this your call light is here. So if you need to um, reach me for any reason, you can just press the call light. The, also the call light is on this bed rail right here, and that little button right here, you can call and press for me, okay? All right, so that concludes our assessment. Thank you very much. Thank you.